Today I thought I would show a little behind the scenes of our setup. We're getting ready to live stream high school graduation on YouTube and Facebook. So out here on the field, this is a football stadium, that is our stage where graduation is, uh, and where the lectern is going to be, where the ceremony is occurring. And families are going to be sitting in those squares on the field. We are standing inside of the announcer's booth or the press box where we're setting up our equipment. So our basic setup is, you can see a camera down there on the field. It's actually going to be closer toward the middle of the field for a graduation ceremony. And we're going to have a long cable connecting that camera up here to the press box. Up here at the press box, we're going to be taking audio from the uh, stadium's PA system and injecting it into the um, composite video signal. Composite meaning a combined video and audio. We're going to be using an audio mixer to uh, be able to adjust the levels of the audio. And I'm also going to have a local microphone. I'll probably just use that handheld mic right there. Uh, so that I can make announcements to the viewers online and let them know what's happening. And then in the next bay over, which we'll show next, will be our video setup for this whole system we're using a, a video technology called SDI stands for Serial Digital Interface SDI is a nice technology because it um, can carry high definition video and multiple channels of audio the camera we're using natively outputs an SDI signal but we're just going to use the video signal from the camera up here we're going to use an audio to SDI embedder. It's a little uh, box by Blackmagic. And then at the streaming devices they want an HDMI output so we're going to use uh, two more little boxes to convert that SDI into HDMI. The other nice thing about using SDI is that the video and audio signals can all be carried over relatively inexpensive RG6 coaxial cable. So I just took, Ooh, that's okay, thank you very much. So here's our long key we're going to use to connect the camera up here to our equipment. Again, this is just a RG6 TV coax with BNC connectors on the end. So we have one long cable between the camera and my, uh, this is that audio injector right here. So it's got an SDI input right here. It's got audio inputs right here and then an SDI out. So our camera coax comes into the SDI input and I'm taking an output from my mixer going into channel 1 and channel 2 on this SDI converter. Even though we're not using stereo audio, we're just, we just have one microphone essentially, we're taking that single mono signal and sending it to both channel 1 and channel 2 so that that goes to the left and the right on the stream. Especially if someone's listening on headphones, you want them to hear sound in both ears. and then we'll take an output from this box and go into the next room for the streaming devices. Okay, we're in the next booth and we have the cable that came from the SDI converter or the SDI audio inserter and really it's kind of hard to see but it is going into the focus it is going into the SDI in on top now the nice thing about these converters is they have an SDI input and then they have, to have what they have says a loop out, SDI loop out. So we can take another coaxial cable and go from the output of this converter into the input of our, of our next converter. And this is what we're using for a webcaster, well, Epiphan Webcaster X2. Nice little device and like I say we've got two of them so we can stream to both YouTube and Facebook. So our basic connection is this is that SDI to HDMI box I mentioned earlier. So we have SDI in, which is the video and audio signal. And then that HDMI out goes to the HDMI input on the webcaster. So there on the side is the HDMI input. I also have a USB mouse hooked up to the webcaster. I've got internet hooked up, power, and the HDMI out goes to our monitor. And we can see we're already getting a video signal from the camera down on the field. And our camera now is set up 
just about in the middle of the field. So that's the signal that we're getting up here. And the same thing is duplicated over here on this side for our other webcaster. Now this particular facility, we just plugged into two network jacks, B4 and B6, but we need to connect those back to the internet. They're not normally live, so that's something that our tech support will help us with. All right, now that we have a video signal and the, these network connections are live, we have to go into the webcaster and connect it to the internet. So if you click down here on settings, we can use Wi-Fi if we have to, but I want to hardwire these because we can. So I want to go to Ethernet and make sure that it is on. So it says here, Ethernet is enabled. So that's good. And then, let me go back here. To get out of the settings screen, you go over here and right click, and that exits the settings screen. I'll do the same thing on the other device. Now this device on the left is set up for Facebook, and the one on the right is set up for YouTube. The pairing process is similar. The first time you use these, you'll need to pair them to your Facebook and your YouTube account. And down on the bottom right is an option that says pair. So you click on that, and it tells you what to do. So you go to facebook.com slash device, enter that code. Same for YouTube. If you go over here, it has already given us a pairing code. So you go to google.com slash device and enter that code. With Facebook, once you're ready to go live, you can just click the start button down here in the bottom right hand corner. Um, on YouTube, you could do the same thing, but we've actually scheduled a YouTube event, a YouTube stream, so we could share the link earlier. So we're going to go into preferences. You want to? Mm -hmm. And go to Publish Destination. And right there is an option that says Test Stream. You can click on that. And everything else should be set. So now if you right click on that screen, now when we go the uh, first look up here, it says Destination, Test Stream. And we go down here where it says Start, we'll, we will be live. Go ahead and go live. Now one thing to be aware of when you're live streaming is there's quite a bit of delay between what you see up here and what people see on their devices. Um, that delay is just part of how the streaming system works. It's not really an intentional delay but just be aware of that. And then on Facebook, we can do the same thing and go live. And by clicking, clicking start. Yep. Sweet. Something else I've done previously when I set up this stream is I set it so that chat is disabled and likes and dislikes are disabled and comments are disabled. On Facebook, I didn't see an option to be able to do that, so we could go into Preferences and see if that's something we can turn on or off. I just see now on Facebook that you went live. Perfect. Probably the most critical component of any broadcast is sound. And in this case, I have two audio sources connected to this mixer. I have this local handheld microphone, so I can use this to say, uh, Good afternoon, live viewers. We are going to start the East Jordan High School commencement ceremony in about 10 minutes. Of course, this is just a test stream. And for the actual uh, speakers on stage, they're going to use a wireless mic like this. This wireless mic comes back into our uh, school's PA system, which, if I can show you, is just to our right, up here. So up there at the top are the receivers for these handheld wireless mics. They go through this mixer, and then I connected a cable to the output of this mixer all the way down here, and it comes out down here in the bottom. 
of this cabinet. And I'll leave this cable here so anyone in the future is welcome to use it. That cable is a line level output going into one of the channels on this mixer. And then I have the local mic connected to the second channel. And it seems that with when I look at the levels on this meter, we want to be just about at 0 dB or even 6 dB is okay. We don't want to go where it's, the red says clip. Clip means you're too loud. And I'll control those levels with the sliders on this mixer. One thing that's important when you're doing audio for an event like this is what your, what's called gain structure. Each device in your chain, in your audio chain, so your wireless mic receiver, your mixer, that um, audio to SDI device, the streaming boxes, they all expect audio to be at a certain level. And you want to make sure that the audio that you're giving those devices is at the level that they expect. Most of these devices have some room to go uh, up or down in level so you can make things louder or quieter. And you don't want to have a really low output from one device only to have to really amplify it a lot in the next device. So for your gain structure, you want each device to output almost at its maximum level of the input of the next device. And you don't want like one slider to be way at the max out at the top and the next slider to be almost down at the bottom, for instance, if that makes any sense. The other important thing with audio is to be able to monitor what the audio actually sounds like. So in this case, I have headphones hooked up to this mixer. Ideally, the webcasting devices would have a headphone output or some way to monitor the sound, and they don't. That's one of the shortcomings with these Epiphan Webcaster X2s. Mm -hmm. um, what they do is in, they integrate the audio and video into the HDMI output that goes to the monitor. But these monitors are just, they don't have mm -hmm. sound, so it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Yeah. But there's not even like a level meter on them. So that's one of the shortcomings. So I have to monitor it here at the mixer. If I could, I would monitor it at the webcaster just to make sure that sound is good through the whole chain. So with that, I think we are ready for Sunday's big day. Now I'd like to show how to set up those scheduled events in YouTube. So first go to YouTube and log in. In the upper right hand corner, you'll see where you can add a video. In this case, we want to click on Go Live. Now we can set up the details, such as the title and the visibility for the stream. When we would like the stream to air. We can also upload a thumbnail for the video. This makes the video easier to find when people search for it. And then click Create Stream. If we need to adjust any of those settings, we can do so on this screen. I clicked Low Latency. Um, that's, if you have a good internet connection, you can go with Low Latency or Ultra Low Latency. But in this case, we're not really relying on audience interaction, so it really doesn't matter how much extra delay YouTube adds to our stream. And now on our list of live videos, you can see the stream that we just scheduled. We can also copy the link to this stream and distribute this link in advance, which is what we did for our YouTube video. That way we can tell people about this video in ahead of time and they can click right to it once the stream starts. They can actually click on it before the stream starts and they'll just see a message saying that the stream is going to start soon. We can pull up the settings for this stream again by going to the YouTube Studio and then clicking on Content on the left hand side and then click the tab that says Live. There you can see a list of our live videos that we have scheduled and we can pull it up and make changes to the video before it starts. I apologize for how glitchy this screen capture is. I didn't realize how glitchy it was until after I had already made this video and at that point it was too late to set up a new scheduled stream. 
So here we are on the day of graduation at Boswell Stadium. Our graduation stage is set up on the away side of the field. People are seated in uh, pods on the football field. Our camera is set up roughly in the middle of the field, connected by a long coax cable up the stairs and up to our press box where our equipment is set up. So there's our camera and our cable and wherever the cable runs across the field we have orange cones set up and then up here in the bleachers any place where the cable is exposed we have taped it down with gaff tape. So now we need to set up our YouTube streaming box to stream to the actual event that we have set up. So we're going to go to preferences down in the bottom right hand corner and go to Publish Destination. And here is the event that we just set up earlier, East Jordan High School Class of 2021 Commencement. And we can also adjust the video quality settings in this uh, screen as well. If you look down here where we have encoding resolution and video bitrate, because we have good internet service, we turn those up to maximum already. But if you are working off from a cell phone or a hotspot, or a slower internet, you could turn down both the resolution and the bitrate to ensure that you have enough bandwidth for the video that you're trying to send. We'll right click now and uh, go back to our home screen. And this is it, we are live. Three viewers. So, this, yeah, three viewers. And so this is what it looks like on the webcaster. And this is what it looks like on the YouTube live control panel. So if you go back into the YouTube account and find the video that we set up earlier, there is an option to view a, like a live control center. And here we can see how many viewers we have. We can also see the stream help. Handy to have up. And when we're done, we're going to hit that end stream button up there in the top right corner. People are starting to gather on this beautiful hot spring day. It's also kind of windy, which is nice for our audience, but also wreaks havoc with our microphones, so we can hear a lot of wind noise from the mics that we have set up. And I installed foam windscreens on the mics, but there's only so much you can do. Now we've ended the video on the webcaster, and the last step is to go back into this YouTube control center and hit the end stream. And that's it for today's live broadcast.